With drones, I use intelligent flight modes practically all the time. So it is great to find them after the first major upgrade of the Mavic 3. In this video, I will show you how point of interest and spotlight work, both with still target and with moving subjects. I will also show some unusual and very effective ways to use these modes. The third mode, the very popular active track, will be the subject of my next video in a few days. As usual, you will find all info about the gear I use in the description below. The three intelligent flight modes are grouped under the name Focus Track. Like in the R2S, we access them by simply drawing a box around our target. A box with three icons for the three modes appears, and by default, it is set to Spotlight. When DJI released the Spectre of the Mavic 3, the main disappointment was the lack of waypoints, an extremely useful intelligent mode. So let's see how flexible point of interest and spotlight are, and if they are able to do some of the tasks normally performed using waypoints. The three modes at the moment work only in normal color mode and not in the log, which is certainly disappointing, and I hope this will be modified at some stage. But the good news is that normal mode in the Mavic 3 is the excellent Hasselblad natural color solution. Focus Track is available at the resolution of up to 4K and up to 60 frames per second frame rate. This is a very nice touch, as we can add some slow motion when tracking sport or people, which is a very appreciated feature. The three modes cannot be used with the zoom functionalities or with the telephoto lens, at least for the moment. This is really disappointing, as when tracking from some distance the ability to zoom in is crucial. I believe this function will be added quite soon, as it is something already possible in the R2S, so there is no technical reason to prevent the use of zoom with intelligent flight modes. I really hope DJI will start to take the zoom function and the telephoto lens a bit more seriously, as it is an excellent idea, but for the moment it can do very little. It is possible to select targets very far away. In this case I've chosen the top of Mount Etna, which is more than 20 miles away. Technology in drones have come a very long way. I still remember a few years ago with the Phantom series we had to fly on top of a place to select it as a target, and then come back to shoot the footage. After selecting the target, all we have to do is tap on the point of interest icon and set the speed and the direction, clockwise or anticlockwise, by using the yellow arrow. Very fast and easy, I like it. Orbiting around the target is always an interesting move, especially if there are several layers in the scene at different distances. With point of interest we have full control of the two sticks of the remote controller, in other words we can ascend, descend, get closer or farther away from the target to add interest to the footage. At any moment we can summon the yellow arrow to modify the speed or change the direction of the rotation. We can even modify the pitch of the gimbal to move the target in the frame. By positioning the drone above the target for a bird's eye view, we can use point of interest to easily perform the famous Hollywood screwdriver move. We can add some action from the two sticks for an interesting sort of rotating crane. In point of interest we can also track a moving subject, although the two main tools for general tracking are Spotlight and Action Track. If we try to choose a target to follow by drawing a box around it, the software will select the terrain and will keep it in the middle of the frame. In order to choose something to follow, like a car, a person or a boat, 
In the settings, under the control tab, we must select the option Subject Scanning, so that a plus sign will be displayed around possible targets. By clicking on the sign, we can choose it as a target. If the subject is not moving or moving very slowly, the selection is simple. Here the drone is tracking, in point of interest mode, this distinguished gentleman advancing in perilous terrain, risking his life for the sake of his community. I believe a thumb up is highly deserved. Using point of interest can be very effective when following targets moving at a slow speed. With faster moving targets, the drone might not be able to rotate fast enough to go in front of them, but it will still track them from the side. Here I have some trees to the right of the drone. I lower the altitude to see how the sensor work with lateral obstacles. And as usual, the APAS 5.0 system of the Mavic 3 works to perfection and rises to find its way above them. Spotlight is an extremely versatile tool. It is enabled by default when drawing a square around the target. We are immediately ready to go. A typical way to use Spotlight is the move known as Course Lock. We move parallel or diagonally compared to a still target, while the camera remains centered on it. It is a great way to reveal a landmark and its surrounding with a very interesting parallax effect. As in point of interest, we have full access to the two sticks of the remote control and to the gimbal tilt, so practically all sorts of moves are possible while maintaining the target within the frame. Most of the moves that in the past I used to make with waypoints can now be performed with the spotlight mode. As an example, the crane shot is a very useful move for real estate videography. It is very difficult to accomplish manually, but using spotlight, we frame our target and then we simply move towards it while ascending. Spotlight will take care of gradually tilting down the gimbal to maintain the target in the middle of the frame. Easy. I suggest using Cine mode to lower the speed for more precise results. It is obviously possible to perform the reverse crane for very interesting revealing results. Under the point of view of videography, Waypoints mode can practically be replaced by Spotlight, although it would be still very useful for other occasions, like surveys and the ability to save a mission. Spotlight is the most useful mode for tracking manually a moving target, while Attic Track is the one to use for autonomous tracking, in other words, without an operator. If we target a moving object in Spotlight with a drone hovering in a static position, it will behave uh, like, uh, well, like a Spotlight. This is useful for following subject moving in a confined space, like a boxer on a ring or a rock star on stage. But in most cases, Spotlight is used for maintaining a target in the middle of the frame while performing all sorts of moves. We can get closer or farther away, modify the altitude, get in front of it or to the side or behind. It is the ideal tool for tracking sport and all sorts of action when an operator is controlling the drone. When trying to detect a fast-moving target, the Mavic 3 often struggles to connect, especially if there is not enough color contrast between the target and the background. When the target is hidden shortly behind an obstacle, it sometimes struggles to catch it back. On both occasions, the R2S performs much better, so there is room for improvement on the algorithm, but I'm pretty much sure that uh, it will be tweaked by DJI once the new color mode HLG will be available. Thanks to the omnidirectional obstacle sensors and the excellent new APAS 5.0, the Mavic 3 is the best drone of the Mavic line for tracking. 
although some improvement are still needed. Click in this link to watch my video about the APAS 5.0 for detection of obstacles. I will add a link to my upcoming video about AT track as soon as I will release it. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video.